others at the U.S. Open in Chaska. The Twins try for a team record 12 wins tonight while playing the Yankees at the Dome. And Patrick Walsh's past raises questions about why he was released from a state treatment hospital. Now he's charged with murder. From WCCO Television, the community's first choice for news in the 90s. This is the 10 o'clock news. The storm blew in swiftly a little past noon, and for many people, there was no place to run. Lightning struck six people today at Hazeltine. It killed one of them, William Fidel of Spring Park. Good evening, everyone. Our lead story is the lightning death and injuries at the U.S. Open. In just a bit, we'll find out more about the victims, five of whom are hospitalized tonight. First, though, how it happened. The first round began at 7 o'clock this morning with no problems. Then a storm came up in the Chaska area. And on this map of the course in the upper left, you can see the 11th hole. That's where the lightning struck. Esme Murphy was on the course, and she reports what happened. The lightning storm hit quickly and without warning. Within minutes, six people who had taken refuge under this tree by the 11th hole were on the ground. I just heard the thunder and then looked over in a tree, and there was about seven or eight people, it looked like, just laid out around the tree, just sprawled out. Paramedics stationed at a medical tent less than 50 yards away were on the scene within minutes, but it was too late for 27-year-old William Fidel of Spring Park, Minnesota. He suffered a fatal heart attack after being hit. Some fans actually felt the lightning, but were not injured. We got one big jolt, and then we got the second jolt, and we got the second jolt. We had light, lightning all around us, and I got it in the arms just like uh, uh, just a big electric, electrical shock. The sudden storm had sent an estimated crowd of more than 60,000 spectators and workers running for cover. Most took the drenching with a smile, not realizing the storm's deadly consequences. As dusk fell here, play continued at the Open. It seems this always historic tournament will be remembered this year as much for its tragedy as for the glory of its champions. Esme Murphy, WCCO Television News, Chaska. As Esme reported, the one person killed by lightning was 27-year-old William Fidel of Spring Park. Now here are the names of the five people injured by the lightning. 43-year-old John Hanahan of St. Paul, 49-year-old Ray Gavin of Mendota Heights, 32-year-old Jeffrey Skalicki of Waite Park, 36-year-old Glenn Engstrom of Arden Hills, and 29-year-old Scott Awney of Spring Park. Tonight in our second look at the lead story, we detail who the victims are, including the man who died. Tom Gasparoli joins us live from Ridgeview Medical Center in Waconia, where four of the victims are hospitalized tonight. Tom? Well, Amy, the four men here at Ridgeview are resting tonight in stable condition. They suffered from minor burns and from some serious muscle spasms to their lower extremities. They are very lucky, though, they are not expected to suffer any permanent injury. The man killed by lightning today is from Spring Park. Billy Fidel went to the U.S. Open today with a good friend, one of the men hospitalized here right now. We talked to the Fidel family earlier tonight. At a lakeside home in Spring Park tonight, this picture of pain. Billy Fidel was 27, unmarried, an electronics technician who still lived at home. He loved to fish and camp. For him, golf was a spectator sport. He went to watch this morning. Now he's gone. I've never met anybody greater than Bill. He was everybody's friend. He never meant anybody harm. He was an overall great guy. He would do anything for anybody. How can you all deal with something like this? You can't. I mean, it's why him. Billy went to the open today using a ticket his father gave him. His dad thought, I'll let my son enjoy the opening round. Oh, I guess I'm kind of numb. I, uh, one thing that goes, you know, I say 40,000 people out there, why my son? Uh, I still think he's going to drive down that driveway. <laughs> This man, John Hanahan, was rushed in bad shape to St. Francis Hospital with Billy Fidel. He was the lucky one. Both of these victims apparently had a significant lightning strike, which means there was a current which flowed through their bodies. And both were in cardiac arrest initially. The one victim responded and the other didn't. And at Ridgeview Medical Center in Waconia tonight, four men admitted with only minor injuries. 
One of them, Glenn Engstrom, heard the thunder, felt the sudden hard rain, then the lightning hit. It happened so fast, I was down on the ground, he just had, it was a boom and I was down. It just like, I, I would imagine it's like if you were shot or something. I feel awful lucky and I thank God that I'm still here. All four men here in Waconia will likely be released tomorrow. Glenn Engstrom says if he is, he will go back to the U.S. Open, regardless of the, of the weather. The fifth injured spectator, John Hanahan, is listed tonight in serious condition at St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center. Amy, that's all I have for you tonight from Waconia. Okay, thank you, Tom. Today's death from lightning was the first in Minnesota this year, but experts say lightning causes more deaths than floods, tornadoes, or any other kind of weather. Since 1980, lightning strikes have killed 18 Minnesotans. The strikes are fatal because a single bolt has up to one billion volts of electricity. That electrical shock short circuits the electrical impulse of your heart. If something interrupts that impulse, the heart's going to be a bit confused. And lightning is such an interruption of that impulse that it just shuts down. That shock can also travel to the cornea and cause cataracts. Now, for what you can do to avoid being struck by lightning, Bud Kraling is in the Weather Center tonight while Mike Fairborn has the night off. And, Bud, what can you do? We were very fortunate last year. There were no lightning deaths last year in Minnesota. But you mentioned there have been 18 people killed by lightning since 1980. And this is the first fatality this year in Minnesota. Good to remove uh, our, our rules and stay indoors as the first one. And if you're outside, get in the car. Avoid tall, isolated trees. Seek shelter in a low area under a thick growth of small trees if you could find that area. And in the open, get away from open water. Get off the water. Stay away from metal objects. And if your hair stands on end, drop to your knees and don't lie flat on the ground. But make yourself as small an object as possible. So some of the rules to keep in mind in case of uh, thunderstorms and severe lightning. We'll have the forecast for you in about 10 minutes here tonight. Okay, but thanks. Well, it was a day of golf at Hazeltine nonetheless. Mark Rosen joins us now for reaction from tournament officials and players to the day's events and much more, Mark. Well, Cindy, as far as the USGA is concerned, they believe they responded quickly to the storm alert, suspending play 10 minutes before the fatal lightning bolt. Still, you have to wonder what, if anything, could be done to protect 40,000 spectators on the course. If it thunders, you know the lightning's going to come, so it does give you some sort of warning. But uh, it's a frightening thing. This. I've seen so many people, I've heard of so many people being struck. It's uh, the best thing to do is get out, get out of it. Not easy to do, though. USGA Executive Director David Fay told us that two weather detection systems are used to predict th threatening storms. According to officials, no one could remember any spectators being struck and killed by lightning at any previous tournaments. Meanwhile, defending champion Hale Irwin reflected. No one wishes to have a, a delay such as that. You know, the magnitude of that storm was pretty severe. But uh, I can't say that it really disrupted me a lot, uh, it, no more so than I think anybody else. But you never, never want to stop for that long a period of time. Because of the two hour and 40 minute delay, 11 groups did not finish their rounds, meaning they will finish from the point they ended tonight tomorrow morning, so the second round will continue as scheduled. Third-year pro Nolan Hankey is one of the best players you've never heard of. His off-the-fringe, coast-to-coast birdie putt on the 10th hole was one of a number of dazzling shots by Hankey, who won the Phoenix Open this year and has been a very consistent finisher in the money. His 67 puts him tied for first at the moment with Payne Stewart. Jack Nicholas shot a 70. We'll have more highlights on the leaderboard a bit later. A memo to golfers in town for the Open. Streaking is popular here in Minnesota. At least it is for the Twins, who tied a team record with their 12th straight win, beating the Yankees 10-3 tonight at the Dome. Young starter Scott Erickson should be heading to the All-Star game after picking up his 10th straight win, but he really did not have his best stuff. He did have Kirby Puckett in the outfield, making Alvaro Espinosa a dead duck at the plate. A flashback to 87 as the Twins' streak hits an even dozen. We'll have more highlights, interviews, all the sports coming up a bit later. And that's it for now. Okay, thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Up next, other news of the day, including new information about this man accused of murder that raises questions about his release from a state treatment center. And then also ahead, how the governor and the DFL are going to, to the Supreme Court to decide if 14 laws are laws or not. And how a chopper pilot rescued a man from the Mississippi River 
twice. Watching the 10 o'clock news on Channel 4. I wonder if I'm getting the most out of my money. Before you know it, they'll be in college. And they're going to need our help. I wonder if we're saving enough for our future. There are so many choices. How do we know what's right for us? Be informed when making investment decisions. Call the Dane Bosworth WCCO Television Investment Connection at 371-2700. Lines are open Monday through Thursday between 3 and 9 p.m. Helping you keep in step with your vision of tomorrow. What are Toyota dealers doing now? Hitting your hot buttons. On Tercel and Corolla. Tercel, the lowest priced two-door sedan in America. Corolla, Toyota's value leader. Now add up Corolla's option and factory to dealer incentive savings. Plus, their special financing, dealer discounts, lease deals, and immediate delivery. And more reliable Corollas and economical Tercels than ever. See your Toyota dealer now. He's hitting your hot buttons. Menards can help you give Dad some power this Father's Day. Ryobi Power Tools are on sale now. They're perfect Father's Day gift. Give this palm sander for just $29.99 after mail and rebate coupon. And the Zircon Stud Sensor 2 is a handy tool for Dad. It locates studs and joists electronically, eliminating the guesswork. Now only $7.99. Shopping for Dad is easy at Menards. Save big money at Menards. On the next Inside Edition, this child's murder baffled police for decades. Then, her best friend had a flashback. My father was holding her hands up above her head. Killed by her friend's dad. An innocent eight-year-old child had spent the last hours of her life being sexually molested and murdered. Plus, Princess Stephanie of Monaco. On the Inside, it's a whole different story. Thursday night at 10.35 on Channel 4. The case of murder suspect Patrick Walsh continues to raise disturbing questions about the way Minnesota's mental health and justice systems work together. Tonight, WCCO has made a new discovery about the chain of events leading up to this murder case. To remind you of Walsh's background, he's now accused of stabbing and shooting a young woman to death two weeks ago in Andover. Police are investigating his links to two other murdered or missing women. And on Monday night, we reported Walsh had stabbed at least six women before he reached the age of 18. Tonight, Trish Van Pilsen reports Walsh attacked still another woman while on furlough from the state hospital, and the attack did nothing to prevent his eventual release. This is where Patrick Walsh was supposed to have been treated for mental illness and homicidal tendencies, St. Peter Regional Treatment Center. Walsh was committed here after a string of violent attacks on girls and women that began when he was just 14. That's when he stabbed a 12-year-old girl in this Duluth Park. When he was 16, he was sent to the regional treatment center in Moose Lake after he stabbed one of his sisters. While he was at Moose Lake, he stabbed a nurse. And when Walsh was 18, he stabbed another nurse at her Duluth apartment. A jury then ruled Walsh was insane, and Judge Patrick O'Brien committed Walsh to St. Peter in 1970. I would have to rate him probably the most dangerous, potentially, of any man that I ever handled. And I handled, uh, I suppose, 10 or 12 murder cases. After six years at St. Peter, authorities let Walsh take work furloughs in nearby Mankato. And in February of 1976, Walsh visited a 23-year-old woman in her apartment. She was a friend of Walsh's girlfriend at the time. According to police records obtained by WCCO, Walsh talked with the woman briefly and then suddenly tried to strangle her. He stopped when she became limp and, according to the records, said to the woman, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. Records also indicate Walsh carried a gun at the time. A little more than a year after that attack, Walsh went back to court in Duluth to try to get released from St. Peter. In his petition, Walsh told the court he was no longer a danger to society. He found a psychiatrist to agree with him. In this statement, Dr. Dennis Kotke said Walsh appeared neat, appropriate, and able to handle his anger without exploding. And while Kotke described Walsh as a manipulative con artist, he concluded Walsh was no longer a danger. But a close examination of the doctor's statement reveals some important things. First, that the doctor spoke with Walsh for just one hour before making his findings. 
that the doctor didn't know Walsh's full criminal history, and that the doctor didn't consult any medical records from St. Peter, where Walsh had been treated. And in fact, court documents reveal that a doctor in St. Peter had warned it was extremely possible Walsh might commit other assaults, and that Walsh continued to be dangerous. Despite all that, the prosecutor, now St. Louis County Attorney John DeSanto, and the judge, who seven years earlier had considered Walsh the most dangerous man he'd encountered, agreed to release Patrick Walsh. At that time, Walsh had to sign a contract promising, among other things, never to carry a dangerous weapon. In the 14 years since Patrick Walsh signed this contract, he went on to find a job at Unisys in Roseville, where he ultimately met Pam Sweeney, the woman he is now accused of shooting and stabbing to death. Walsh was supposed to continue psychiatric treatment, and a Hennepin County social worker was supposed to oversee that. But when I talked to that social worker this week, he didn't even remember Patrick Walsh. Chris Van Pilsom, WCCO Television News. We contacted St. Louis County Attorney John DeSanta and Judge Patrick O'Brien today. Both said they don't remember agreeing to release Patrick Walsh. The judge did say his hands may have been tied by a state law that requires judges to release committed patients if a doctor testifies that they have been successfully treated. Democrats in the Minnesota House and Senate today took legal action against Governor Arnie Carlson, asking the state Supreme Court to declare invalid 14 controversial vetoes. Democrats say the governor failed to deliver his vetoes within the three-day deadline required by the Constitution. In a lawsuit filed today, the Democrats reject the governor's argument that DFLers are using a technicality to embarrass him. There is no such thing as a constitutional technicality. People do not draft constitutions for other than serious motives, uh, and they do not include in them petty things uh, that constitute technicalities and can be waived or avoided by custom and usage. The governor, meanwhile, warned Democrats that he will turn the legislature into, quote, legalistic knots if they pursue the court action. The governor's own lawyers are preparing a similar court case. Here's a summary of national news all about travel or tragedy by air. The tragedy was in Los Angeles. This blackened parking lot is all that's left of a police helicopter crash that killed three people. Two were officers aboard the helicopter when it crashed. The third person was killed on the ground in the explosion. A helicopter saved a life today in St. Louis. A traffic reporter for a local radio station used his chopper to rescue a man who had jumped from a bridge into the Mississippi River. It was not an easy operation. On the first try, the rescuer lost his grip. You'll see the man go back down into the river. The chopper had to dip down a second time, and he finally succeeded in getting the man to a nearby boat. And for the ultimate in air travel, the astronauts of the Space Shuttle Columbia finishing up their last full day in space. Columbia is supposed to return to Earth tomorrow. Columbia is finishing a nine-day mission, the first one ever devoted entirely to biomedical research. How would you like to make an investment that turns $4 into $2.4 million? Well, it's simple. All you have to do is be very, very lucky. Like the person who found this copy of the Declaration of Independence in the back of an old painting. And today it sold at an auction house in New York for $2.4 million. The owner of the document originally paid 4 bucks for that painting at a flea market, and all he really wanted was the frame. So, you got a new muffler today, huh? Mm -hmm. You go to the discount place like I did. Uh-uh. I decided quality was just as important as low price, so I went to Carex. Carex? They had the exact muffler I needed. Well, yeah, but and listen... And a lifetime guarantee? Yeah, but... But how much did it cost? Yeah. See for yourself. That's less than I paid. Exactly. Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Shh. Don't worry, call the Carex man. Wake up, because it's time for Slumberland's biggest sleep sale. If you can nap on it, doze on it, curl up in it, or sleep 40 winks on it, it's on sale. You're going to save and save big. The biggest sleep sale at Slumberland ends Saturday. This is one worth staying up for. 
A three-way sale that can only happen at the Wyzetta Auto Center. New Cavaliers save up to 2,000. Storms up to 2,300 and Metros up to 800. Mitsubishi Galant's and Eclipse is 2,000 cash back. Find Minnesota's largest selection of 3,000 GTs and Diamantes. Purchase a Lexus demo, manager, house, and representative driven LS 400s and ES 250s. Chevrolet, Geo, Mitsubishi, Lexus. One location. The Wyzetta Auto Center, only one mile west of 494 on all new 12 394. It's a fabulous sale. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, Bud Crailing and the weather. Brought to you by NSP, the energy to make things better. By investing $650 million in pollution control equipment and burning low sulfur coal in our power plants, NSP is playing a major role in guarding two of our most precious natural resources, clean air and clean water. Well, certainly a busy day in the weather center. It okay. continues to be busy tonight. Mm -hmm. So we watch some storms develop in the eastern part of Nebraska that okay. seem to be headed our way. So mm -hmm. maybe late tonight, early tomorrow morning, you may hear some rumbling again. Uh, mm -hmm. And we won't really be out into the sunshine of the cooler temperatures, I think, until maybe Monday. Monday. So, oh, okay. That's too bad. We have the forecast for the U.S. Open for tomorrow morning, and there's a good chance of thunderstorms. We'll start off the day with around 69 degrees, and winds out of the southeast 10 to 20. For well, the afternoon, partly sunny, but we're going to carry a good chance of thunderstorms for the afternoon of the high of 90. And tomorrow evening, probably cooling off in the early evening to about 78 degrees. We had 87 today. 100 was the record back in 1956. Our morning temperature, 71. Ha, 37 degrees. Is that a memory? Back in 1969, precipitation a hundredth of an inch at the airport station. Sunrise, 526. And currents, cloudy. Temperature 76 degrees, dew point at 63, humidity 64 percent, winds from the south. It's a good thing we got a little breeze. I hope it's coming in your window, 15 to 22 miles an hour. Pressure rising 29.80, cloudy. Temperature now at 76 degrees in the metro area. Well, the thunderstorm started in Nebraska, and they're forming again there in the eastern part of the state, through Aberdeen, South Dakota, up through Jamestown. Roseau got a good storm with street flooding there, heavy storms at War Road, passing just south of International Falls, and it looks like this development right about there, the eastern part of Nebraska, will be headed our way, coming into the Twin Cities late tonight or early tomorrow morning. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch until 2 in the morning, Eastern North Dakota, northwestern Minnesota, well, that's the Devil's Lake, Fargo, Thief River Falls, Bemidji area, and then until midnight through central South Dakota Pier and down through Chadron, Nebraska. So to the northwest of us and to the west of us, severe thunderstorm watches until 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. We do have cooler air headed our way. We're anchoring a couple of storm systems, a low pressure in North Dakota, northwestern Colorado, a cold front in between, Cooler air is coming. Temperatures going into the 70s in the extreme western part of North Dakota for tomorrow. But this high-pressure system over the southeast is going to bring those temperatures uh, into the 90s and warm and humid weather into the central states. Portland, 70 for tomorrow. That's one of the cooler spots. Reno at 80. And Waco, Texas and Macon, Georgia, temperatures in the low to the mid-90s for tomorrow. Here is our forecast for the Twin Cities. Mostly cloudy. Good chance of thunderstorms by morning. Overnight, 69 degrees and winds out of the southeast for tomorrow. Partly sunny, but then also a good chance of thunderstorms. Warm and humid. will be near 90 for Friday night. Variable cloudiness. We don't change this very much. Good chance of thunderstorms. 66 for the low. And our Saturday forecast of variable cloudiness. A good chance of thunderstorms with the afternoon temperature at 85 degrees. But we are going to improve on temperatures. 80 on Sunday. 78 Monday and Tuesday. And Sunday, partly sunny and then sunny and cooler and drier Monday and Tuesday. By that time, the U.S. Open will be... History. And everybody will be out of town by then. Yes. Yeah. Wish Thanks, you could man. back that forecast up the Monday and Tuesday to the weekend. Yeah. Oh, we well. tried, but yeah. it just <laughs> won't work that way. Out. Thanks, bud. Well, the Twins tried to remain the hottest team in baseball tonight. Up next, Mark Rosen returns with the highlights, plus those from the Open.
You may not think you need a camcorder from Best Buy, but think about all the things in life you might miss. So save every moment along the way with a new Sony camcorder from Best Buy. You can get this Sony 8mm camcorder with 8 to 1 power zoom for just $8.99. And every Sony camcorder includes an extra battery and a carrying case. So save every moment along the way with a new Sony camcorder from Best Buy. If you're concerned about your family's safety, then consider the Chevy Lumina sedan. Because to make it safer for your family, Chevy tests it with this family first. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevrolet. Six great plans were being made at the home of General George Custer. Plans to ride west, deep into Sioux country. This summer, experience this west, worn rough by wild rivers and wild horses. Where they say at sunrise, Libby Custer still waves goodbye to her husband and to an era that now lives only in the minds of those who visit North Dakota. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, Mark Rosen and the sports. Brought to you by Cellular One. Connecting phones to people instead of places. Imagine no limits. Cellular One on cellular communication. How good is the best cellular phone if the system isn't smooth? Choose Cellular One. We're ironing out the wrinkles. We introduce 24-hour system monitoring to ensure clear conversation. We're constantly expanding coverage. Our customer service is right where you live and round the clock to keep things running smooth. Cellular One. Imagine. No limits. To learn more, call 1-800-IMAGINE. Scott Erickson, still on fire tonight. Oh, I'll tell you what. The way things are going, uh, see, we've got the U.S. Open, International Special Olympics, uh, Worlds. No. A little <laughs> early for that. Oh, no, we can't take Pardon it. Pardon me. How far have the Twins come? Well, tonight's 10-3 to win over the Yankees was their 12th in a row. That ties a club record. And Scott Erickson's 10th straight, yet he considered this a fairly poor performance. Yes, baseball's wonderful when things are going your way. Just ask Gene Larkin, his bank shot off the bag at third goal from Ken Herbick in the first inning. The last couple of years, of course, that would have been a fall ball. Chili Davis wasn't around in those seasons, though. Another two-homer game for the Twins' DH. What an acquisition. His 13th and 14th of the year, Chili's power surge helped roommate Erickson win his 10th in a row. The league's earned run leader wasn't totally on top of his game, though. Kirby Puckett helped out with an outfield assist. Why the third base coach waved him home here, the Yankees only know. Not even close. The Twins now move within a game and a half of first place Oakland. Twins winning 10-3. to Toronto shutting out Cleveland. That final was one to nothing for the second straight night. It is Chicago trailing Texas 8-3 in the eighth inning. Kansas City 6, Baltimore 4. Well, the great thing about the U.S. Open is that you don't have to possess a heavyweight name to make a name for yourself, at least for one day. And I'll give you a couple of perfect examples. Tom Byram has won nearly $1 million in his five years on the tour. He'll feel awfully good about his 400 par 68 today. Byram is from Fort Worth. Nolan Hankey is another. He's played in one U.S. Open in 89 and finished 21st. He had the putt of the day with a perfect read on the tricky green on the 10th hole. Hankey finished his memorable day at five under par. He is tied for the lead at the moment because 11 people are still out on the course. Actually, 11 threesomes still out on the course. But they'll resume play tomorrow morning. Payne Stewart also at five under. Byram at four under. Mark Kalkovecchia, a strong day today, three under. And Scott Hoke, also three under par. For others, today was one to forget. Case in point, Billy Andrade, winner of the past two PGA events. Look at that nice lie. Of course, he had to take a drop here. He had a blistering 33 on the front, but he found nothing but trouble the rest of the way. That unplayable lie led to a triple bogey eight on that hole. Then in the par four 16th, the one we profiled last night, Andrade hit his approach shot in the water. Where did that ball go? Ended up with a quadruple bogey eight. Curtis Strange won the Open two straight years before Irwin won it last year. He found frustration on this round and this hole. And when these don't drop, sometimes you just don't know it's going to be your day. Strange ended up with a 77. Trevino 
who won in 81, had some fun early draining this birdie putt, but also had a lot of trouble after the two hour and 40 minute delay and also finished with a 77. Now, Chris Perry is still on the course tomorrow morning, two under par after 14. Nicholas, Scott Simpson, Irwin and Kite also turning in excellent rounds today. Woosnam, the Masters champ, one over par. Watson at one over. John Chafee still on the course tomorrow morning, one over. Strange, five over. And Greg Norman shot a 78 today. Defending champion Hale Irwin talked about his round. Let's say a less than ideal start and a less than ideal finish. And in between, there were probably less than ideal golf shots made. Although, I would not have been upset at in any fashion if someone would have given me a 71 uh, starting the day. In fact, I could be in, persuaded to take three more of them and be very happy with that. That tells you how difficult Hazeltine is. Hale Irwin would be very satisfied, as he mentioned, with that same score the next three days. Well, two people not concerned with the U.S. Open. Stillwater coach Don Campbell and Osseo coach Keith Lorenzen. Their teams are battling for the state baseball title. The Ponies' Sean Flattery delivered an RBI gap shot double, helping his own cause as the pitcher Stillwater winning 10-0. The 10 run rule went into effect. The game was called after five innings. Stillwater, the class double A champs. In the National League, Los Angeles beat Pittsburgh 3 2. Philadelphia knocked off Houston 5 4. And the Cubs beat San Francisco again 4 3. Elsewhere, St. Louis over San Diego. Cincinnati knocked off Montreal. And Atlanta beat the New York Mets 3 2. And finally, to the new NBA champion goes the Disney commercial featuring Michael Jordan and all the Chicago Bulls. Jordan requested the team concept. Michael Jordan and the Bulls. You just won your first NBA championship. What are you going to do next? We're going to Disney World. Yeah! <laughs> the whole gang. Yeah, next Tuesday, look for the Timberwolves to name their new head coach. In all likelihood, it'll be Jimmy Rogers, but that announcement will come after the Open next Tuesday. Okay, okay. thanks, Mark. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. Your local Northland Ford dealer. Dare to compare. Ford Crown Victoria with an all-new overhead cam fuel-injected V8 engine for improved mileage, all-new suspension for better ride and handling, driver's side airbag, and four-wheel disc brakes for added safety. We're so confident you'll buy a Crown Victoria after a test drive, we'll give you $100 if you buy any other car in its class. It's the Dare to Compare $100 Test Drive Challenge. Going on now for a limited time, only at your local Northland Ford dealer. In the Minnesota State Lottery. To find out if you're a winner, watch the drawing exclusively on Channel 4 every evening at 629. It's a lot of fun, and all proceeds benefit Minnesota's natural and economic environments. Also join Channel 4 Wednesday and Saturday evenings at 959 for the live Lotto America drawing. Finally tonight, with all of the attention we're paying to the athletes in the U.S. Open, we don't want to leave tonight without telling you about some other very important athletes. 600 athletes from across the country are in Miami this week participating in the 11th annual National Veterans Wheelchair Games. Some events include the 1500 meter relay and the slalom. These games give the athletes a chance to show what they can do, not what they can't do. That's wonderful. You're here. That's it for us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Good, Good evening. Night.